Hey there guys and welcome back to Tech Easily. So in today's video, I will be teaching you guys how to connect HTML. In this case, I will be creating a form in HTML and how to connect that to a database. And the database I'm going to use is going to be MySQL. And I'm going to teach you how to connect those by using a language called PHP. Now, since if I make this into one video, it's going to be too long. So what I'm going to do is split up these videos into parts and then I'll create a playlist at the end so you guys can go through each one of them. But in my first video today, I will be teaching you guys how to install XAMPP and why you need to do that. Next, I will be teaching you guys how to create a form in HTML. The video after that will be about MySQL databases. So how to create a table, how to create table entries, etc. And then I'm going to make a video on PHP and how you actually connect your MySQL database using PHP. And then my last video is going to be about how to join all these parts together and testing everything out and just going through everything one last time. So if you're interested in these series, then please keep on. Okay guys, so before we jump into why we're downloading XAMPP and everything else, I'm going to start with the very basics because I feel like a strong foundation is the key to actually go on and build on in our next videos. So let's talk about PHP and MySQL. So since we want to connect HTML to a database, in this case, my database of choice is MySQL, we're going to do that using a language called PHP. And PHP is a script language, but I'll get into that in more detail when I do the video on PHP. For now, just know that it's used to connect HTML to MySQL database. Now, the integration of MySQL and PHP is known as cross-platform. The great thing about PHP is by writing the code, we can actually insert records into our database. We can delete them. We can update them, etc. And it's actually fairly simple to do once I show you the code in my next videos. Now let's talk a little bit about MySQL databases. Watching. Okay guys, so MySQL databases. Uh, just like I said for my PHP, I'm going to go through this in a lot more detail in the video I make for MySQL databases. But for now, just to give you guys a brief introduction, like the overview of what they are. MySQL database it is a database system that runs on a server. And the great thing about it, is, about it is that it's actually open source and it's backed up by Oracle. And it's also known as RDBMS, which stands for Relational Database Management System. And what that means in simple language is that this database stores data in a structured manner. So basically using rows and columns. Okay, so it's also ideal for small and large development, um, application development. And this is great because you can start off with a small web application where you only have a couple of tables, just say up to 10, from 10 to 15. But it can also be used to like scale up your website. So you can, I think I believe it's, you can create up to 4 billion tables. So it's really, really great for doing that. Um, some other advantages include that it's really fast and it's really easy to use as well. Now guys, this is some really, really basic stuff, but I believe it's best to start. Okay guys, so now that I briefly talked about PHP and MySQL, let's get into XAMPP. And before we install the XAMPP server on our computers, I'm going to walk you through why we need to do that and what's the purpose behind it. So what does XAMPP actually stand for? So the X in XAMPP stands for cross-platform. And like I mentioned to you guys earlier in this video, um, the combination of using PHP and MySQL is known as cross-platform. And this is something that we're interested in because we need PHP to connect the MySQL database to our HTML. So that's an interesting thing to note. Um, while we're here, I'm going to walk you through what the other letters mean. So A stands for Apache, M stands for MariaDB, P stands for PHP, and the last P stands for Perl. Now, some important things to note about XAMPP before we move on to installing it is that it allows web developers, so that's us, to create a local web server for testing and development reasons before we upload our application to the remote web server. 
So now that we got that out of the way, let's actually go on to installing XAMPP. Okay guys, so let's go right ahead into Google. Um, I've written download XAMPP and you want to go into this one, the patchyfriends.org one. So I click into that. Now it's going to give you a bunch of options and depending on the type of operating system that you're using right now, you will download XAMPP according to that. So I'm using Windows, so I'm going to download from this section. If you're on Linux, you want to come down here, you want to and download uh, XAMPP from this section. And again, same for Mac operating systems, you will download it from here instead. But since, like I said, I'm on Windows, I'm just going to go and click on that. And it comes up, you're just going to click on save. And you're going to wait for it to download. I'm just going to be, I'm just going to come back when it's finished downloading. Once it's finished installing, it's going to give you, it's going to ask for your permission to make changes and you're just going to click on yes. And here you can see it's appeared at the bottom. Now it's going to give you a warning. It always gives a warning. So just ignore that and click OK. Now to set it up, this, we're just going to click on next. Now this is an important page to select components page. Usually by default, all of these are ticked, but if they're not, guys, then I want you to click on MySQL because we need that. I want you to click on um, PHP as the program programming language and also um, PHP my admin. Usually it is ticked, all of them, but if not, it's actually good. I, it's actually a good idea to just tick all of them. You never know what you might need when you go on. So let's click on next. Um, this page is basically saying that it's going to be saved on your C drive inside a folder called ZAMP. So we're okay with that. And click on next. It's going to bring you to a page here. It doesn't really matter. Let's go back into our installation process. Click on next. Now this is going to take a while to install, so I'm just going to come back when this installs and then walk you through the control panel of ZAMP. Okay guys, so once your installation process is complete, you click finish. This is something you should end up with. So your ZAMP control panel. You can also access this through your apps. Um, it's showing up in my recently added as well. So let's get to the fun part now. Now there are a number of things that you can do with ZAMP control panel. Um, one of them is if you go into Netstat, it tells you exactly what's running on which port. So um, that's really handy. And you can also start and stop, for example, Apache, MySQL, Tomcat, etc. One thing you guys need to be really careful about is before you can start your development environment, you must have Apache and MySQL started so they must be running at the same time and um, when you go into admin for mysql you will go to a thing called php my admin and i'll show you guys that in a second it's basically an open source software tool it's an administrative tool and i'll show you what you guys can do with that in a second but first let's start off our apache and the great thing is it tells you what port it's actually running on as well and I'm also going to start my SQL and click on admin. And as you guys can see, it has opened up a thing called localhost forward slash PHP my admin. Now this is actually a graphic user interface. It's written in PHP, hence the name, but um, it's one of the most famous web-based MySQL management tools. You can literally create da in databases manually um, using this. You can import your databases, you can export your databases, uh, you can write SQL queries. So bear in mind we can do all of this using PHP as well. But for um, how I'm going to teach you guys, I'm going to use PHP to connect my SQL databases to HTML. And once you've created your database manually, you can literally create your tables manually as well, put data into them. So it's really a handy tool to have especially to begin with um, it's one of the best I'll go through this in more detail in my MySQL video which will be coming up simple 
So that's it for today's video, you guys. I know I covered a lot of information in this video, but it was necessary to get all that out of the way in order for us to actually go on and code. So my next video is going to be about creating forms in HTML, and I'll show you how to style them as well using CSS. So the next video is going to be really interesting. So please stay tuned for that. And then we'll go on to um, MySQL databases and PHP and connections. And by the end of these series, you guys should be able to actually read and write data, update, delete from a database, which is really, really cool. So until we code again, thank you so much for watching, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave any questions or recommendations you guys may have in the comments section down below. And I will get to them as quick as I can. And I will see you in my next video.